So let's start. Um, so at the beginning, let me just show you um, the packages I'm installing. So I'm installing the commercial uh, RPMs, and the version is 5717. Uh, so I'm installing the you know the default ones for my SQL. I do install a dependency a NUMA control that I need for my SQL, and I'm installing router as well. So all those packages are going to be installed. This machine is vanilla; it has nothing on it. It has Apache and WordPress, but uh, it has nothing on it. So this is how quickly you install, you know, those. Um, those packages, MySQL, full MySQL, cloud, full MySQL server, and router. Let it finish. Okay, and it's done. And now I'm just adding uh, the local host name uh, to the host, so we'll have DNS, um, DNS um, resolve. Uh, we have to have it. It's going to be pointed to local host, otherwise things doesn't work well. Now I'm creating uh, the data uh, locations, the data deals for my skills. So it will be uh, data S1, S2, and S3. Now we're creating the configuration file for uh, the first server. In the configuration, we set up the default directories for my skill. We set the port, and please make note that this is going to be 3301, 3316 instead of 06. We're going to set settings for replication. We are using replication and GDITs um, for, my, for group replication. So this is built on top of it. And the part that is dealing with the group replication itself, we have uh, instructions. We have the name of the group. Uh, you can set whatever you want in this um, format. We are not starting by default when we start a server, just because I want to start it uh, dynamically. The group replication channel um, local address and, and ports, it will be different between the, the three machines. Okay, so you see different ports for each machine. We are not bootstrapping, and bootstrapping is something that you do just once when you build the system, so by default we don't want to build. And we don't use single primary mode, we use um, multi-master. We'll do the same on, on the three machines, so we're gonna, now going to build a configuration file for server 2 and for server 3. And you can see the differences, the port is different, it's 3336 instead of 16, and the port for the group application and the server ID is 3. So three different servers, very similar configuration, uh, just a bit different. I'm just making sure that the permissions are all belongs to MySQL. Now I'm running MySQL server with configuration of S1. So server 1 is running. And let's connect and have a look. I've connected to the server on 3316, uh, which is the first server. And let's run the commands we need to set it up. So the first command is I'm uh, disabling the uh, log bin uh, because the commands I'm running now, I don't want them to be replicated. I'm creating the user for replication. It's RPL user, just a name I'm using. You can use whatever you want. I'm granting replication uh, permissions to this user. And it has a password. I'm flashing the privileges to reread the permission. And now I'm allowing a um, log, log binary. I want to everything to be logged from now on. And I'm changing the master with the user and password I just created. And the channel for replication will be called group replication recovery. Good. Till now, there is nothing set up yet. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm installing the plugin for group replication. And I'm doing it just once. All the things I'm doing now is just once. Now I'm bootstrapping the group. For the first time you're running the group, you have to bootstrap it. You don't do it ever again. If you do it, you'll break replication. I'm starting the replication. It builds all the structure. And now I can disable the bootstrapping so it won't do it again. And you never, ever do bootstrap again, ever. Okay, now we can monitor our current... Oh, that's a bit... Yeah, too big. Let's not... Oh, still too big. Let's make it smaller. Yep. Yeah. Now you can see the table. And you can see that we have one member. And this is its port. And it's online in one group application. So we have one server up and running. Okay, I think it's time to run the second server. So, yep, okay. 
Now we're running the seven sec the second server. As you can see, it's using a different directory and different configuration file. So now we have two servers are running, and we're connecting to three three two six, which is the second server. I'm running the same commands. You know everything that I showed you before. I'm installing the group application plugin. This is the second server, so we have to install it once. I'm starting. Let make sure. Let, let, have a look. I haven't started bootstrap. You never ever do bootstrap again. I'm starting group application and have a look. Now monitoring, we can see that we have two machines up. So they are now talking between themselves. They are fully recovered and they are ready to go. Okay, let's try the third server. So now we're running third server, right? Let's connect to the third server and run the same commands, everything the same, creating the user, installing the plugin and start the group application and monitor and we have now three members so we have now our group application up and running on those machines all ready to go that's cool okay next thing we are going to configure uh, my uh, mysql router so we're setting up um, the init file for group application the full router sorry and here are the um, settings that we set so we leave everything in place where it was and we're adding a routing rule so this is just a name i'm calling it round robin you can call it whatever you want we are binding to address um, on the server to 3306 which is normally where mysql is and we are saying that the destination when it, when someone is trying to connect to 3306 it will connect to the local host to 3316126 and 36 to these three servers. And the mode is read only. Now I know the name is weird, but read only means round robin, read write means a uh, one specific server. So naming is not good, but that's how it is. So it's just round robin. And we started the MySQL router, as you can see, it's very quick. Um, and now just let, let's have a, make sure that it works. So we're trying to connect to 3306, which is the router. And we check the port. We see that every time we run it, we get a different port. 162636, round robin. And it just goes again, again, and then it again goes to 1 and 2 and 3. So it does round robin, exactly what we wanted. So the fact it's read-only doesn't mean anything. Okay, so let's connect to a uh, 3306 to the router and we went to one of the servers. We don't know which, we don't really care which one. So we're creating the WordPress database and we're creating a user for WordPress. That's all cool. And now we're installing WordPress. Yeah, okay, we're setting up the WordPress database, WordPress username. There is no password, not secure, don't do it at home. And we connect to a specific, and I'm connecting there specifically to 1.6 because I want to create all on one server just to make sure there are no uh, conflicts. I'll show you conflicts later and why I'm using specific server. And I'm just installing WordPress, a regular install for WordPress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we are done. Cool. So we have WordPress installed and we hopefully have it replicate across the different databases. Okay, I'm just changing the theme because I've got a, a hack theme that uh, if I'm adding in here the parameter C, it will create new comments and new uh, posts every time we refresh. So we can actually show some load and not just reads but writes as well, which is what we are trying to show that you know we are just creating new posts. Okay, now we connect to the router and we enable the general log on the server that we are connecting to. Now we're going to run it three times, so it will go to 3.3, you know, 3.6, 1.6 and 2.6. So general log is now enabled on all of them. I just ran through the router and it went. Okay, now I'm going to open a different uh, layout for our um, for a console and the reason I'm doing it is on the bottom I'm going to show you activity so that will show you activity in those three uh, bottom uh, consoles you will see the general log for the different machines um, S1, S2 and S3 so each one represent different server and different activity and we'll then run some stress test that basically goes to WordPress through the router 
and this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to change the port from 3316 for WordPress because it knows it goes to 16, which is one server. I'm going to tell it go to, I'm just changing to 3306. So go through the router. I'm telling WordPress, WordPress, go to the router, and the router will redirect you. And we did that. And now we can run the stress test. So this one goes, it opens five concurrent connections to the local host um, on WordPress. And as you can see, as soon as we do, we're doing this, we will have activity on all servers. So those three different servers, reading and writing um, at the same time, and WordPress is happy to replicate. So we have activity, cool, on different servers. Right, that was nice, and uh, but not that impressive. So let's um, let's see what happens when you have what we talked about disaster. So I'm locating where the second server is running. The process says I'm going to kill them. Like gonna, they're just dead. You know, they're going to be dead. Okay, gone. Bang, they're gone. As you can see, there are no processes in S2. As you can see, at the bottom is not running. The middle one is not running. So we have a disaster. But WordPress is up and running, right? No problem. Let's have a look at the monitor and we can see that we have only two members now, not three. Okay, because one was gone. There wasn't there was a Chrome decision and they decided they are the majority, so they stayed up. And now we can recover. So I'm just copying the configuration file so I won't have to do it again. And I'm gonna remove, destroy all the data for S2. So S2 is gone. Now we have a, we're starting up a brand new server, empty, nothing in it. We initialize the data there for S2, right? So it's empty. We are copying just the configuration file, so you know, just the same configuration we had before. And now just making permissions. And now I'm gonna start it up and see what happens. So you start up the server, so S2 is now up and running, and it has nothing in it. Right? It's not part of the group application yet. So we have to connect to it and instruct it to go back and be part of the group application. We're going to create all the users and stuff that we need to use. So we, we enable the group uh, the uh, general log just to see activity. And then creating the, uh, the user, changing the master, installing the plugin because this server is brand new. Right? Installing the plugin and start the replication. And now have a look what happens. Okay, so now we're starting to see some activity happening in the middle one. And if we look at the monitoring, okay, yeah, a bit of time. This is all running on one laptop. So we now see that the second server is now recovering. So it is while there isn't still activity. So WordPress does not know anything about the fact that we have a problem and we are still recovering. Now I will use some editing for demos. So I will run this much quicker than it's in reality. And we will see that after recovery time, it's back online. And now it's back online and WordPress is now using the second server as well. It was all done automatically. I didn't have to do anything. So WordPress is happy. That's cool. So that was recovery from disaster. Now let me show you what we're doing with conflicts. So conflict means that we have two, uh, two rows at the same time uh, updating from two different places. And group application, the way it works is by um, checking um, um, or checking where, where the transaction was committed first, and this is the one that takes uh, presence. So we have two servers, one and two, on different sides. And we're going to try here. We're setting the auto commit to zero because we want the, the, the decision about transactions are made uh, when you are actually committing. Um, and that's where it goes to all the servers and all the servers decide do I commit or not so we're creating a table the capital table is very simple it has an ID which is a primary key and a name that's it it's a very simple table that we're creating and it's automatically uh, replicated to both sides so we insert um, into the text the name start to begin and we have one row 
with ID 1 and the name start. Cool. Let's have a look the other side. Okay, we do have the, t the database and we don't have the table yet. Why? Because it wasn't committed. Right? Cool. So, let's commit, right? And now we have it in here. So it's automatically replicate upon commit. So when, it, when we commit, the whole servers are doing their thing. Now let's start a transaction and update on this server, server one. Let's update the name one for this row. Okay, so row one will have, instead of start, we'll have one as a name. And at the same time, let's start a transaction on the other server and update, yeah, right, on, of course, this. Let's update the name two to the same row, one, right? So the same row, instead of being one, we're going to set it to name two, right? It accepted it, no problem, because they, there was no commit. And now we will commit on this side, and it, it was accepted. What happens when you try to commit in here? We get an error, right? Because we cannot change the transaction started at the same time. Now we have actually the first server, the second server was the one who won. We'll do the same thing, we'll start another transaction. So the first one who commits is the one to win. And the other one will get an error. So your application needs to know how to deal with a transaction errors, right? Okay, so we change this into 1-1 one, one now, and the other one we're starting a transaction. So the first one, the, the, not the one who started the transaction, it's the one that was committing first. So we have now 1-1 one, one on one side, and we have 2-2 two, two on one, the other side, and we update on 2, so it was changed locally on both, and now we commit on the first server, no problem at all, it was committed, and we'll try to commit on the other one, and we'll have an error again, because it was the second one, the first one, one. So they all said, or oh, one server said, no, no, I can't accept it, and they all decide to roll back, and the one one, the first one, was winning.